quickly show everybody, show up um, what I have uh, got for an agenda. And um, uh, let's see. Just so you all know what to expect. I don't know that this, um, this meeting will take all of the time we have for it, but um, what I thought we would do is, I'll, I'll just uh, show this agenda and hand this off to Rich. And uh, everybody um, just, uh, as Rich asked for introductions, just kind of uh, let us know uh, who you are and what you, what you like to do. Um, and then we're gonna go into the structure of this, uh, this whole transaction, which is a public offer private sale. We'll go, go through the details of that and talk about the schedule for submitting and uh, selection and uh, going under contract and then questions and answers. So with that, I'm gonna hand this off to Rich, Rich Brown. Okay, so Sean, you could uh, close your agenda. Good. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for attending this Las Estrellas proposal uh, webinar. Um, as you know, this particular set of parcels has been a work in progress for us over the last year and a half, and we're excited to see uh, diversity of interests both at this webinar and the conversations I've had and uh, Sean has also uh, had uh, over the last uh, couple of months. Um, uh, other thing I want to note is that uh, this um, Santa Fe Estates is governed by master plan, and that master plan includes yeah. housing, uh, senior housing, open spaces, dedicated open spaces, recreation, retail, and, and other commercial uses. So uh, we hope to see and envision a, a vibrant mixed use plan uh, from our proposals uh, so that uh, we see uh, everything that uh, could be uh, for Santa Fe and what the future could be. One of the big things that I'm excited about is that there's a new trend of large enterprises opening satellite offices in small size culturally rich cities such as, as ours in Santa Fe. And we're seeing a, a new influx of out of state um, home and workspace buyers who are attracted to our outdoor environment and our festivals, the food scene, restaurant scene, and the lower cost of living. So, uh, so building a mixed use community like this uh, could meet some of those needs from this new uh, resident uh, and some of the locals who are looking for new housing opportunities and, and gives the city the chance to uh, achieve some of our goals of jobs through construction and increasing the quality of life uh, and then recruiting new industries uh, to diversify our economy. So uh, with that, I want to start out by um, asking, I'm going to point out in my Zoom board, uh, just if you could introduce yourself and tell us why you're, uh, you're here um, and then I will go around the, uh, the board and then I'll turn it over to Sean and uh, we can start our Q&A session. So so with that, I'm gonna start with Jamie since she was the first person on the board. Jamie, if you could tell us who you are, who you represent and, and why you're here today. Sure, uh, Jamie Jaramillo. I am the real estate development planning manager with HomeWise. Daniel Slavin, our development director, he is also on the call. And we are here listening and learning and um, very interested in what's going on with Santa Fe Estates. So thank you so much for allowing us to be here. Great. Uh, let's see, I have next, I have, um, did I see Jay Grab? Yeah. Jay Grab's here. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, there. Uh, Jay Grab, I'm with Phase One Realty. I have an uh, interest in Santa Fe States through, uh, with, with an investor looking at it. And uh, we know quite a bit about it, but I want to see what this is all about. And I'll have some questions at the end. Great, thank you, Jay. Uh, next, I see David Newell. David? Hi, I'm David Newell. I am Director of Land Acquisition for Pulte Homes of New Mexico. Um, here with a couple others from our department, our land department, just to listen in and, and get some more information related to Las Estrellas and the master plan and, and learn a lot more about it and uh, see where, if and where Pulte can fit in. Great. Thank you, David. Uh, next, I have Ernie Romero. Ernie, are you there? Yeah, good morning. Ernie Romero, Phase One Realty. Um, I've been associated with this property for over 30 years. And so I thought it would just be a good thing to see what's going on and see whether we have any ways of making a play on some or all of it. So thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Ernie. Uh, next, I see Russell Brock. Russell, would you like to check in? Hi, good morning. Um, a commercial developer based in Santa Fe, represent an investment group here, and I'm interested in this beautiful piece of land. 
great, great. Uh, and then I have also my screen of Rahim Kassam. Rahim? Yeah, hi, I'm Rahim Kassam. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I am a uh, developer and, uh, you know, just looking at the site, um, trying to get some ideas and uh, trying to see if this could fit um, into something we could do. So thank you. Sure, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else? Uh, Christine McDonald, oh, there she is in my box. Hi, this is Christine McDonald and I'm representing Santa Fe Properties Development Company and we're just here listening and learning this morning. Great, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, is any other development uh, agency or organizations that I missed? I'm looking through my, my screen here. Hi, good morning. This is Jennifer Jenkins with Jenkins Gavin. I am just here to observe and, um, and learn. So thank you very much. Great, thank you, Jennifer. And how about uh, Sandra Noe? Sandra, can you hear me? Oops, looks like she's on mute. Okay, maybe we'll come back to you uh, if, you're, if you're having some technical difficulties. Okay, so Sean, I think those are the key ones that have brought in. I'm looking in the uh, invite list here to see if I've missed anyone who's just come on board, but I think we're good. So if you'd like to kick off with Q&A and um, start from there, I'll go Thank you, Rich. Thank you again, everyone. Um, bringing up the agenda again, and um, I want to run through this because it's um, it's uh, it, it may be obscure to some of you. I have a feeling some of you know very well the situation we're in, but we're 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 a bit framed in as as the sellers of this property, and I'll try to describe that during the course of this conference. I think you'll begin to understand why why things are the way they are. Um, the structure of this is a private sale under state law. We have gone through a public offer really to, to uh, uh, catch the attention of, of uh, um, local, local and, and non-local people to uh, the project. The goal for the city is to convey the land and development rights in a private sale to a single qualified entity. The governing in the governing body's judgment, uh, that entity would be best suited to developing the land for the uses anticipated in the adopted master plan and in the best interest of the community. Um, the, we, we find ourselves as a city in several different roles, and this will really frame how, how and why we're, we're approaching this sale this way. And one is um, as the seller of specified parcels. Um, on the website is a map of um, developed parcels, and I'll show it during the uh, question and answer scene as we need it. But seven parcels, uh, which are uh, among the rem remnants of the very last undeveloped parcels of Santa Fe Estates. Santa Fe Estates conveyed that land and its declarant rights uh, to the city in September. And we are gonna be, we're gonna be holding back a couple of the parcels that were conveyed to us south of the 599, south of um, Veterans Highway. And so it's everything that is, was conveyed to us in that, in that transaction and is north of the 599. And this, this uh, parcel, as you, all probably know is sits west west of the uh, New Mexico or US 285. So um, where the sellers specified parcels, we will be assigning the declarant rights and status that we we were were assigned by Santa Fe Estates Inc. So Santa Fe Estates Inc. has no enduring right on these grant properties. They belong now to the city and the city will not be modifying those rights. They'll, they'll be the city will be conveying those with this sale to the, to the selected party. Um, we are also very, each, each category is distinct. We're also as a city, we're also the utility provider for waste, wastewater, water and solid waste. And this will, be, uh, this will give rise to some very, very important points that we'll bring up during question and answers about what's out there and how do you connect to it. And so don't, let, don't leave this conference without some understanding or confidence in your head that you understand what it is that we are going to be representing in our role as a utility provider. It's a very important part of this transaction. And finally, 
what are we going to retain in our authority as municipal corporation? And this would be, um, we're a charter corporation in the state of New Mexico. So obviously we are, we are uh, our, the authority in our chapter 14 land use code and every other bit of code, um, including uh, the um, authority over the rights away that have been dedicated and so on and so forth. And, um, and these really, really in this context, these are very four very distinct roles and, that, and they are gonna govern how we're approaching this. Um, the governing law in this transaction will be out of state law. This is um, uh, um, statute section 354.1. Um, I'm gonna encourage everyone to have a look at that. It'll help you understand how we're doing this um, as a private sale. So the, the definition in this, uh, in this section of code is the private sale that we're, we're proceeding with. Um, future offerings that we bring to the market may not be this. But this is what we're doing for this one. Now, um, we have offer requirements um, and in joining this meeting, the developers will have completed an eligibility form that lays out um, uh, all of the sort of technical requirements to make an offer, to have the offer, offer accepted. And most, and so, and those are the detailed requirements. Now, more generally, um, the, the goals that the governing body city council had imposed upon us as staff is there will be an adherence to the master plan. Now that's an adopted master plan, which is to say it's part of code. And uh, we expect that the successful uh, proposer will be adhering to it. All the covenants, conditions, restrictions, the affordable housing designations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we also will be requiring, um, because of the way we're procuring this under state law, that the offer amount has got to equal exceed the appraised value. Now, I've not included the appraisals in the documents that are posted on the website for a reason, which is that the, it's certainly public documents and they are available to anyone at the city clerk's office. The, these documents are not gonna be associated with the sale. We're referencing them uh, as the appraised value under state law that allow us to do the transaction. But we are not, we, we are not um, suggesting by any means that the appraisal reports should be relied on for any reason by any bidder. That is our obligation under state law. And again, it's a public document accessible uh, by way of the city clerk's office. Uh, it's actually two separate appraisal reports, same date, March 19th, uh, 2020. And uh, the city clerk is aware of, of uh, that, that the, they may be receiving uh, requests from any, any party. Um, another requirement for uh, the city to accept the bid um, laid out to us as staff is we will be uh, requiring the uh, in the bid selection, the selected bidder will be providing us with sufficient, um, with evidence of sufficient financial capacity. And the way I envision that is, it'll be related to um, the anticipated phase development of the developer, which I won't, I won't be dictating, and the, the sort of the, the peak load, peak capital load of that development plan. So that's what we'll expect um, as a condition of of uh, selecting a bidder. Um, other than that, the, these are guidelines um, that were imposed on us by city council. We absolutely will be respecting and also under state law. That's how we're doing this. Now, in terms of schedule, um, we are uh, having a, a, this, this pre-proposal conference, which is non-mandatory. So submitting the eligibility form as a requirement of the offer is definitely the case, but it was also a condition for entering this meeting as a um, speaker. So I'm really grateful for you all to come aboard because one of the functions of this is for you to learn what, where, we, where we're coming from and going. But another equally important is, um, is to be informing us as the city as to what we need to be aware of as we enter this proposal phase. So, sorry to interrupt, Sean. I yeah. saw that Rahim had his hand up. I think we're doing questions at the end. and. Uh, I just want to make sure, Rahim, are you having any technical difficulties or? or no, um, there was there was an, another individual, Robert Lucero, who was waiting and waiting to be let in, but he has now been let in. So we in. just wanted to make sure you're monitoring who's waiting yeah. to be let in. Thank you. Yes. I love oh, it. we thank, are. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thanks, Raheem. And uh, I don't want to discourage people from piping up. Um, there'll be. I don't want to say that, um, um, Liz, that we need to hold back our questions. I think I'm going to during question and answers. That should be a little bit open fun format. But thanks for Raheem, Raheem, and Raheem, and thanks, um, uh, Liz. Um, uh, so again, um, the submission deadline is posted as March 23rd, 5 p.m. by email, and the email is mandatory because we're shut down for COVID. We're the the uh, deadline is by email by 5 p.m. local on the 23rd. Uh, anybody who submits an email will need to submit uh, within seven days the, the hard, hard copy proposal to us. And I will get that in time, but we need it uh, received by the city uh, seven days after the email. Um, your proposals will be valid for 120 days after receipt. Uh, the government, we will be um, organizing the proposals we receive in a way that will hopefully will make it easy for the governing body to decide I'm not quite sure how much time that will be, but we'll be right on it. So we'll be scheduling a government body review um, uh, soon after that. And, um, and that governing body, I'm going to guess, will go into executive session before it comes out of. So, so probably it will be a non-public initial meeting to go through any issues we find. And then I'm going to guess, too, that governing body will have a, a large interest in um, uh, transparency and we'll be doing its uh, its actual selection in public hearing. And uh, notice of award will follow that again, uh, timely. Um, we'll, that'll be on the staff end after the governing bodies decided and we'll be working right on that's high priority for this for the city. Um, the uh, purchase agreement and escrow would be uh, taken care of within 14 days after we've we've notified the uh, selectee and the closing date will be determined. I, I'm, I'm very much hoping that there'll be um, very little um, diligence that hasn't been done before you've proposed. Good, so um, any questions about that stuff before we go into questions and answers? Great. Uh, Rich, oh, go ahead, if someone had a question. Yep. Oh, uh, Sean, I just wanted to say, uh, before we go into the Q and A, uh, two things I wanted to state. Um, there are some uh, city staff on this webinar. And I want to make sure that they're introduced uh, and talk about their expertise before we get into the Q&A so that people are aware of the city staff that are attending. So I'm going to start with the economic development team. That's with Liz Camacho. If you could quickly introduce yourself, Liz. Hi, all. Uh, Liz Camacho, City of Santa Fe. Uh, primarily do a lot of the outreach. Uh, I'm here learning as much as y'all are. Thank you. And Noah Burke. Hi everyone, I'm Noah Burke. Um, I'm in the land use department. Um, I oversee the current planning division. Great, thanks. Eli Isaacson. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Eli Isaacson. Uh, I'm the planning and land use director for the city of Santa Fe. I know most of you, uh, nice to meet um, everyone else. Great. Lauren Lucero, you wanna introduce yourself? Lauren, I work in economic development as an asset associate and I help with leases and properties. Great. And T, our T member. Hi there, I am T Eisminger and I contract with the City of Santa Fe Department of uh, Community and Economic Development, uh, mostly helping out with marketing, advertising and communications around this property and, and the other properties to come uh, that the, the city is, is thinking of uh, disposing of in, to meet its goals. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the second part I wanted to ask, um, we have a Q&A box. You could put your questions in there. Uh, and we also have a, a, a hand raiser. So uh, if you have a, a difficult or complex question, you could put it in the Q&A so that we make sure we articulate it the right way. But um, if Sean is ready for Q&A, uh, you could raise your hand. Or if you have a long question that needs a, a more complex answer from our, our experts here from the city, uh, please add it into the Q&A box and we'll make sure that we answer it. So great. with that, Sean, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Rich. I super appreciate it. And I super appreciate all the staff in on this call. Uh, thank you so much for, for doing this. Um, and uh, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, what I'm, what I'm gonna suggest to everyone is uh, you, you'll probably have some questions you, that have been burning in your mind and pipe up anytime in the meanwhile. And, and I think Rich will keep an eye on as they pop up and Liz um, and anybody, you, you guys chime in, stop me. 
But otherwise, I'm going to run through the, the uh, question and answer um, uh, question, Q and A's that, that we have uh, compiled and posted, and then some that have come since then. And, and as you run through them, I think some questions will pop up and you'll go, yeah, that was going to be my question, or I need better clarity on that. And uh, again, as we go through these, I'll be, I'll be thinking about which of the four roles of the city um, need to be heard from as we go through these answers. And hopefully that'll organize in your minds as well so you understand why we're doing this. So I'm gonna share screen on the K. These are uh, uh, things that have come up since, since we posted these. So um, uh, uh, covenants, conditions, and restrictions. Um, we're in general, th these are uh, recorded documents uh, available at the county clerk. Um, we aren't going to be bringing on to our website in general. As a general rule, if you can get them from the county clerk, we won't post them. If you can't and they're relevant, we will. So we're going to try to be as transparent as possible uh, within that context. If, if they're recorded, go find them. Uh, if not, we will make an effort to post them and, and bring them in. And it, I would welcome you um, in, in real time as we go forward to let me know what you think you need to know that is not uh, recorded. Um, is there a mandated build out? Yes, it's an adopted 2000, 2005 amended Las Estrellas master plan, specifying the housing density uses public spaces, affordable housing requirements. Um, as we go deeper into this, this issue is gonna come up with respect to the uh, tract boundaries. The master plan, uh, if you've had a chance to look at it, uh, it has um, it has track boundaries, but it also has area um, boundaries, shaded area boundaries that uh, don't overlay precisely with the new track boundaries as we go forward. That isn't going to relieve the requirements of the Las Estrellas master plan uh, boundaries or regions. So even if they straddle the new uh, parcel boundaries, um, they're going to be a requirement. And that said, in my, um, my own um, analysis, the housing uh, requirements fit neatly within the new track boundaries. There's not gonna be ambiguity around the, around the most sensitive issue, which is housing. Any questions about that particular? That's a, that's a fairly uh, um, sensitive and uh, nuanced issue about the old track boundaries, the regions in the master plan and the new track boundaries. Great, um, water rights, no, they are not conveyed with this parcel. They didn't convey, uh, they are not going with this parcel. So the developer will have to obtain those. What's the appraised value? Two reports, again, available to city clerk, totaling 4,015,000 for the, for the tracks that we are selling. We're, we're retaining about roughly 20 acres in two tracks south of the, south of the Veterans Highway and, um, and this, is the, this is the value of the tracks that are for sale. All of them are within uh, Las Estrellas, but for one tract, which is called track two, it's, a, it's, right, it's right on the kind of the, the quasi frontage road of the 285 and it's, it's called track two. And it's just outside the Las Estrellas boundary, but it is within the old Santa Fe Estates grant. Um, how will the city select a, uh, an offer? Um, again, I think I covered this in the goals. We're going to be conveying the entire property, which is say these the tracks that are uh, for sale, and the clearance rights and status without takeout removal, addition or modification of any rights, status, obligation, or interest described in the property or the rights and status to a single responsible entity submitting an offer that is deemed in the best interest of the owner, in the sole judgment of the governing body, consistent with with state law. Um, this will be a private sale, so. Um, as we talk about that, and it sounds like we might have a question about that. Um, uh, I don't have deep insight into how the governing body is going to think about this. And so uh, referring to how I'm speaking to you in this, um, in this uh, moment, I'm city staff. Everyone here on this call is city staff. The governing body is the, the sole judge. So we can't speak for that governing body. Um, conditions of sale, which were set out by the governing body, the offer no less, the state law is the offer has to be no less than appraised value. Governing body is on board with that. Um, the uh, 
uh, offer and successor interests shall adhere and conform to the terms and conditions established in the master plan, including the affordable housing des designation and any all bylaws, covenants, restrictions, et cetera. Is a public, I'm sorry, any questions at that point? We have a few questions. They're not particularly, they might have like addressed different sections because I know that at one point you were talking about water rights and, yeah. and I'm sure, Sean, if you want us to kind of interject when it, it comes yeah. up. Um, yeah. we have, we've got three questions. Um, I'm not sure this, there's a, will you share any reports on the sewer and water systems that the city has in its possession? Great, I'm gonna to get to that. And so let, let me hold off on an answer on that. All right, the other question we had come in was, can you please tell us more about why water rights are not included in the conveyance? Uh, I, that's off, off of my, um, I, it's not in my scheme to, um, to um, delve into why. I don't know, but I, but I think it has nothing to do with this parcel. I think the city had an interest in those water rights. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe maybe we can um, I, right now it's an anonymous attendee. Uh, so if if the anonymous attendee wants to give us their information, uh, we might be able to have somebody else on city staff who could be able to answer that question. Uh, but we just need to know who you are so that we can direct it. And then we have a third question coming in. How does the city plan to enforce the development of public space, i.e. 7A slash 7B, if Great. at all. Great. So I'll cover that too separately. I appreciate that very much. So we'll get yes. to those things. And if we don't, um, holler back. Good. Great. Thanks. Um, a public improvement district or similar public private partnership for the financing and provision of offsite in infrastructure? No. Um, I, I, I would say this, it's not that we don't like that, it's that we haven't done it. It's, it's, it I just wanna say that the city's interest in, is in moving forward quickly uh, toward housing, to getting housing online. Uh, mm -hmm. And in the context of, of this lovely place we work for, um, new things take an extraordinary amount of time. So uh, we're not gonna be considering on them this. We, we wanna move, we, we'd like the developers to bring the resources necessary for this work. Topo survey, no, we haven't done it. Um, is a license or written permission necessary for uh, potential offers to visit the property or to perform, perform non-intrusive uh, investigations such as surveying? No, we're not gonna require that. The land's open, it's unfenced, go to town. Are there open space or trail easement requirements? Yes, please refer to the master plan. Um, uh, there are a little bit more than that, and I'm going to go into that with this next question. To whom will open space and trail easements be dedicated? Our answer is the city as a municipal authority has not expressed an interest or intention in accepting ownership, easement, trusteeship of the lands to be dedicated. It's not resolved, but we have not expressed any interest. Um, uh, the city is just for broad context, the city uh, uh, from a fiscal point of view um, is often not a great um, uh, grantee or trustee because of its, its limited resources. Um, and, and both uh, delivering services and paying for them are a problem for us. So that's the consideration in which this um, interest or intention has not been expressed. Um, and uh, so uh, as we, uh, assign the declarants rights and status, we will not be holding back some rights around open space and trail easements. Um, now that's, that's our role. Uh, that's our, how we will be handling this as the assign or of declarants rights. Again, of the four uh, distinct roles the city's playing it's in that role that I'm answering this question. Now, th now that said, there are some good questions, a uh, couple on the table, one about um, parcel 7A, 7B and the open lands. And I'm gonna get to that too, not in this context, but coming up. And then um, uh, also uh, some communications we had about trail easements, which are not shown in the master plan and are not as yet dedicated. Um, so I'll be covering those in a slightly different context. Um, for the knowledge of the parties, this is the agency that's handling this. The economic uh, uh, community and economic development department is handling this. Um, you've 
been introduced to some of the staff will be involved. Um, Eli and Noah in the regulatory environment. Um, a lot of our team is, is present on this call of economic development, but the economic development department, uh, community economic development department, which includes affordable housing division and asset development and, and land use division um, is offering this. And communications, I'm gonna suggest, direct them to me if I need to um, uh, uh, be the air traffic controller, I'm happy to be, but I'm gonna suggest you direct them to me by email. Hey, Sean, this is Wingate Payne. I don't know if you can hear hey, me. Win. Yes, how are you? Hey, I'm great. And we had um, talking about entitlements and all of that area east of Rich Top. Um, it had been floated that all of these parcels for sale possibly be uh, put into use as conservation easements, trails, and so forth to limit impact on neighborhoods like Los Estrellas that are existing and feel as a if, uh, they're dealing with a really good maximum density there, and then um, as well as Thornburg, and then possibly transferring that density to uh, the west. So um, I think that might make make everybody happy neighbors. Um, and I think we had mentioned that too, but um, I think it's an elegant plan. If there's any way to transfer density, I think that would might be a, a real winner. Yeah, that's those are excellent thoughts, Win. Um, in uh, just a caution that in uh, in revising any master planned use and layout, um, that will the, I think that will each developer will know this uh, uh, innately, but it will slow down the beginning because it could it could kick in other uh, uh, reviews and and uh, Eli may be able to speak to that, but but in in the, uh, if if a, a change in use or or the spatial distribution of use is uh, sought by a developer it may kick in to, uh, and Eli, would you let, would you like to speak to that? I'm sure or Noah or Noah could, I think Noah has more familiarity with the project than great, than great. especially in, in those uh, on those specific topics or questions. Yeah, thanks Eli, thanks Sean. Um, hi Wingate, nice to see you and hear you again. Um, so yeah, if any changes to the master plan um, it, are anybody wants changes to it, whether it be density or use, that would have to go back through the planning process. So it would be an amendment to the master plan, which would then have to go back ultimately to the governing body if it was inconsistent with what was approved before. We don't have a transfer of development rights um, for the city. So we just have designated tracks with density assigned and uses assigned for the Los Estrellas master plan. So that would be um, the process that would have to go back. And as Sean mentioned before, it would be a, a slower process, right? Than just taking it at what it's, what it's valued at now, what it's assigned to now. Thank you. And that said- Understood, thank you. Yeah, yeah and that said, when um, th those are uh, really, um, uh, probably will speak to the uh, community engagement, community benefit uh, of, the, of the selected developers. So thank you. Um, public engagement, this is, this is our, our uh, we, we, we are, um, uh, doing a, a, we're treating this as a public meeting. So um, there are participants live and this will be available um, in recorded form via the city's website. Uh, we will be, uh, we expect to be delivering our results in executive session as such city council executive session, but we also expect a strong desire of the city council to bring it out of executive session. That's not a given. That would be its governing body decision, but we expect that to be a public hearing uh, at the very least for uh, selection. Financial qualifications, yes. Um, again, this is direction directly from this from the governing body to us, um, and it this this uh, sufficient financial capacity. Again, I, what I'm what I'm visualizing is that with each de developer will have a different phase development plan. I'm I'm predicting and each one will be able to address in their own financial pro forma how they'll how they'll capitalize that and and that would that's what I would expect to be presented so uh, a plan that fits with the financial capacity and we will be very interested in knowing that any selected developer absolutely has the capacity to complete this we don't want to have completed development lingering I think I, I mentioned this in a different context, but the uh, covenants, conditions, and restrictions, 
are, are uh, recorded, so we won't be posting, but uh, uh, it would be the obligation of any bidder to obtain those from the uh, county clerk. Uh, confirm whether or not the master plan is fully aligned with the zoning in each parcel. This is what I alluded to uh, and was alluded to with 7A, 7B and, and track nine. These are the um, areas on the, uh, basically surrounding Thornburg mortgage. Um, across the master planned area, what I noticed is that the housing loads that were, the housing loads and, and distribution in the master plan actually fit neatly within the new parcel boundaries. Now down by Thornburg, there, there looked like there was a, um, a reconfiguration based on master plans and subsequent um, uh, resurveys, uh, survey um, boundaries to bring us to this point. Now that doesn't alleviate the master plan requirements across the site, including on those sites, nor how those areas are distributed within and across parcels. So open land down in the track nine and track seven A, seven B. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna go to the trouble at this moment to bring out the parcel map because I think the, uh, the participants will, will be familiar with that. But this, this question is about, hey, what's happening with these recreation areas, open lands, um, and uh, in the context of, of what looks like uh, a couple of iterations of, of new boundaries down by Thornburg, and it will not have an effect on the adopted master plan. Questions about that? Good, this sort of follows up on the same thing. Track nine is not what it was shown in the master plan. It's, it's uh, the, the, the Thornburg uh, property itself is city owned and it's not in this transaction, um, but it does uh, affect the new parcel boundaries compared with the master plan boundaries. So uh, no business for this group to um, in this, in this particular transaction to need to communicate with Thornburg or anyone else on this place. But, uh, but your, your task as developers will be to work through the master plan requirements with the new parcel boundaries. And I don't think that's impossible. It looked like it was, it was quite viable to me. And if it looks impossible, um, let's have that, those conversations because I would appreciate to have them. Uh, here we are back with roles, city roles. Does the city envision a role for itself in the development of Las Estrellas or is this sick, strictly a commercial vent venture governed by the master plan and relevant zoning? Yes, it's strictly a commercial venture and it's strictly governed by the master plan and relevant zoning. Yes, that's our role in this transaction. We'll be selling the fee simple parcels and we'll be conveying the declarance rights and status. And then what we will be retaining is only in our municipal authority and as a utility provider. Um, NDAs, uh, non-disclosure agreements, no, uh, I don't think uh, it will be the benefit of us and it certainly is harder for us to do with, but I would prefer always that our communications be um, as open as transparent as possible and subject to uh, the IPRO rules in the state of New Mexico. Um, transparency is about all we got going for us. So we're gonna be sticking with that as a golden rule. Um, utility locations and capacities, thanks. That was a, a question that, uh, that somebody had asked and it's been a, a, an absolute focus of the questions that, that we've received. So let's go through this carefully and explicitly, and I'm also wanna uh, encourage folks to pipe up with questions in real time as we go through this. Utility locations and capacities for this site um, uh, will be, we'll be providing detailed plans and specs for uh, water and sanitary infrastructure. No, um, this is not recorded documents, but it's also um, what we are gonna be conveying, again, speaking to our separate roles as the seller of the fee simple, the the assigner of the declarant rights, the utility provider and the municipal authority. In this case, um, because we don't want to compromise our role as utility provider by, by, by distributing information 
um, that the water and wastewater divisions engineering teams need to have very good control over that information. And I don't want to have misspoken and find that my colleagues in water and wastewater now have a handful um, to deal with. We're not going to be doing that. What we can say is this, that uh, the um, developer, the Santa Fe States, the previous development team did uh, go through engineering review with water and wastewater for um, plans related to Las Estrellas and Santa Fe Estates. And their approval was granted on that basis by water and wastewater. Now, the so the I, I, I sent a map, basically a map of layouts to show what had been built and what hadn't. The, the, um, the truth that I can speak about this, speaking for the city, is that the city's water and wastewater division um, did their diligence in reviewing and approving the plans that were the engineering plans uh, by, by uh, licensed engineers that Santa Fe Estates had proposed for the Los Estrellas and Santa Fe Estates subdivision. That's a case. And I've shown those in the map as to what got built. Now, um, two things. One, one is what has yet to be built and two is what is the status of that approval? Well, what has been built is basically in the right of ways outside of the fee simple parcels we're selling. Um, what I have seen in the master plan is that the uh, particular the drainage that runs off of Ridge Top to the west, that is parcel NPR one, and the the our retained parcel six A, which is south of the five ninety nine, are are not going to be gravity fed up to Ridge Top. So they're going to be draining essentially gravity fed down to the west. And the developer will have to provide essentially um, uh, force, force lines and, uh, and, and uh, lift stations to get it up to, the, up to uh, a gravity line, which is um, to the south of the Las Estrellas development. So that's what I've seen as to as built as to how, how well those, en en engineering, those approved engineering plans will satisfy. Um, that's not certain. The reason is that between the approval of those engineering plans for Las Estrellas Santa Fe Estates, there's been subsequent growth to the north of that development, specifically around um, uh, Monte Sereno. A developer of these of these uh, this area is of Las Estrellas would have been expected in any event to submit engineering plans for review by wastewater and water. And that will still be the case. In, and, and what I'm communicating is that those approvals are not a given. Those, those uh, the new developers engineering plans um, may not fit with the as-built infrastructure and particularly the offsite infrastructure downstream. So I want fair warning. I'm gonna write this more explicitly, but that's what I've tried to represent. And uh, let me open it up for questions at this point. John, we have, uh, right now I see one question in the Q&A and then I think Jennifer Jenkins has her hand up, but I think the first question came from the Q&A earlier. So uh, Dave Gourlay uh, says, um, has there been a selection criteria established, a point system, or will the selection be based on price only, assuming all or most respondents have proven up financial performance ability? Great, thanks. I'll, I'll just knock that off, uh, David, and thanks for asking. We don't have insight into that. Uh, what we have is what the governing body asked us to do. We don't have insight into how it will make a decision. My guess is the city council itself doesn't have an idea exactly how it'll decide. Um, so the requirements we have in accepting the bids are as, as I've shown, I don't know how the city council will evaluate and select. Okay. Uh, one other question we have, uh, Jennifer Jenkins has a question, her hands are up. Thank you, Rich. So are there any unique affordable housing requirements relative to the master plan or is it just gonna be the standard Santa Fe Homes program requirements that are applicable? Noah, would you like to respond? Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Sean. It's a good question, Jennifer. I think, um, thank you for that question. I would have to actually research the master plan but I think there is some affordability housing requirements that were built in and adopted at the time. I don't think they have changed um, I think it's actually stipulated in the plan on one of the first two pages. Um, uh, so that's, but I would actually have to research more to, to give you those exact figures. 
So if there are unique requirements in the master plan, then those would supersede and, and, um, and govern um, as opposed to the Santa Fe Homes Program. That's correct. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, question I have, I see hands up for Daniel Slavin. Uh, Daniel, there? Yeah, great. I, I just saw it following up the same line. Do you, because there's no zone agreements and do you have income ranges that are expected um, for the units that I think you're referring to in the master plan for those affordable homes? Or is there some underlying thing so I can understand uh, sales price points for those affordable um, Noah, it, you feel free, or Eli, but uh, our, our uh, director of housing, affordable housing isn't in on this call. I was hoping she would be Alexandra Ladd, and I'm going to suggest that you reach out to her directly on that. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys, this is a bit tangential to it, but um, as far as... Um, uh, me and a, a few of my police officer friends have been talking about how they would love to live in Santa Fe. Is there any way to be streamlining getting these guys to be able to get into uh, affordable housing units? Because most of them do qualify, but they live in Rio Rancho, but they don't actually know that they could actually live here in Santa Fe to retain them. Um, but a lot of our superstar civil servants, um, you know, is there, is there a way to get them, um, you know, a first preference or to streamline some coherence for them to be able to get in line when these units are built? Um, and maybe, uh, kind of kill two birds with one stone here. I know this is a bit tangential, but it's an idea I've been playing around with in my head. That's a, that's a terrible analogy. <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, bring two things back to life with one EpiPen. There we are. Rich, do you want to, do you want to talk around that? Yeah, it's a, it's a very, it's a good question, Wingate, uh, but uh, I, I, would, I would say a couple of things. Uh, one is that uh, we are uh, in the, the process of um, uh, past the resolution uh, that for land sales is that we are working on a scattered sites affordable housing program. Um, and as a, as a public entity, um, we cannot specifically put anyone front of line uh, because we're public servants and uh, as a public entity. And because this will be a private development once that private sale happens. Uh, so it'll be up to the developer to figure out what sort of plan they would have for housing and housing queue uh, as it relates to affordable housing. Uh, while we'd love to have everyone find a home, um, uh, it'll be sort of the developer who's chosen uh, to figure out how they wanna you know, build their, their housing uh, availability and on opportunity. Uh, and then on the city side, as I said, we are looking at some sites, some smaller sites within the city uh, that we hope to have uh, for affordable housing choices, um, but it will be first come first serve if, if that all comes into play. Great. Yeah, I'll, I'll collaborate with our trade associations and Alexandra. Thanks so much, guys. Great. Sure. Thanks, Wynn. And and from the point of view of this this sale and conveyance, I think um, that would go into the category of the, the community benefits that we're sort of alluding to. Yeah. Um, and and I'm gonna uh, one more thing I'm gonna say about the uh, water sewer um, is that we there is some again I, I I think everyone will know there's always uncertainty in how you develop sites. Um, and trying to trying to limit that uncertainty is is your goal in this. Um, obviously, I would have nothing to say about how you're going to build roads and utilities on the parcels, but it's the offsite improvements that could could rear rear up. I don't I, I can't even weigh how likely that is. Um, but uh, but let me let me say that in the in the structure of this sale, because the city is got to sell this parcel for appraised value or higher under state law. What that implies is that we can't foresee in a, in a normal due diligence period, we can't foresee that there can be a credit for offsite improvements. That's, that's going to be impossible in the structure of this bid. So unfortunately, we're going to have to, uh, the, 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 the bidders are going to have to own the uncertainty offsite. And I think uh, your, your 
your industry and you, you people, uh, development people are better at it than us in the, in the context of uncertainty. So I, I understand that it's um, nothing anybody likes and, uh, and ordinarily I'd say, yeah, we'll own that. In this case, we don't get to. So your bid price is gonna have to reflect um, the uncertainties that you enter this into both on-site and off-site. Sean, there's another question in the Q&A that says, will the willing en winning entity become public knowledge? Yes, thanks for asking. Um, uh, the, I, I do want the transparency to feed back to this same community um, because we're gonna be doing similar transactions in the future with the similar people. So this, uh, this group that we have assembled now, plus or minus will probably show up again for other projects. Um, it's very important for you to um, trust that there, there's a, a transparent process that's fair to the degree that I, I can guarantee it. And part of that is feeding back just what was bid. So in the context of the selection process, which will, I, I believe will probably happen again in, um, in executive session, non-public meeting, but we'll brought out into public hearings with the result. Um, we will go through selection, public hearing, um, award, closing, and at that point I will feed back to the community all the, all the uh, proposals we received. I think that's fair and it speaks to the, um, the desire to be uh, transparent under our own ethics and under state law. And uh, thank you, Sean. Um, Daniel, I see your hands up. Is it, it your hands raised? Is that, uh, are you, do you still have a question? No, just a technical difficulty. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Sean, I wanna, I wanna address a question that was sent earlier um, sorry, I didn't. I didn't uh, speak up then. Uh, someone asked about: um, Is there a point system or a or a criteria uh, that uh, we will be looking at as we as we look at our proposals? And and, and while I, I can't speak for the city council, uh, I know that uh, some of the um, concepts or ideas that they will be looking at as it relates just to the master plan. That's the priority uh, of if you think about what criteria to place, uh, what the master plan is calling for. Uh, but I know that in some of the discussions I've had with some of you over the last year and a half, uh, that we will be looking at your proposals from a standpoint of, of your sense of Santa Fe, your you know, sense of place in Santa Fe. Whatever your creative ideas are in your, in your, in your sense of Santa Fe in your design uh, will be something that, that I'm sure the city council is gonna look at. And then I think on top of that in priority is that your commitment to affordable housing as it relates to the master plan uh, and your creativity toward that. So those are, those are two areas. Uh, outside of um, uh, your financial viability, I think th those are two that you would uh, want to consider uh, when you put together your proposal. Thanks, Rich. Mm -hmm. Great, I'm going to um, bring up some, and, and, and everybody, we're about running out of time and we're running out of questions. So let me bring up some of the more uh, uh, um, uh, sort of undocumented or, uh, or um, Unrecorded issues and uh, and pipe up because this will be. Um, let's see, my uh, um, Liz and Rich, are my hitting questions? Am I getting questions that I need to? Uh, yeah, I do. I want to add one more thing, Sean, if I could. Uh, yep. If you're, if you are joining this call as a guest, um, I would like to ask you to send your question to Sean Moody uh, directly so that he can answer them. Uh, if you are not a developer and uh, you're 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 joining as an attendee, uh, his email address is. S X Moody at Santa Fe NM.gov. So if you're a guest listening into this broadcast today uh, and you have a question that's uh, uh, not a part of the developer team, uh, please send your email to Sean Moody at S X Moody at Santa Fe NM.gov. Thanks, Rich. Um, and, and actually, that's, that's apropos because we're going to go into some questions that did originate from uh, residents and the public. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, everybody can see this screen okay. These have, these, these have come up uh, in, in the context and, and a little bit more beyond this, and these will be posted, um, but I wanted to cover them. Uh, some questions about the appraisal and the, and the uh, land area 
that are being sold. Um, I, I don't really have, uh, I'm not going to go into what the early appraisals or uh, acreage was, but I will, I will just iterate that on the city's website is a map of the uh, parcels that are for sale in this context, the undeveloped parcels within the Las Estrellas master plan. Um, the appraisals are dated March 19th, 2020. They're available at the city clerk. Um, 228.5 acres in total across all the parcels and a total value that of the sale parcels, sale, for sale parcels of 4,015,000. Um, the uh, sale doesn't include the, the, the parcels that came into our possession south of the 599 South of Veterans Highway. It's so 6A, which is off, off on the Western boundary with um, Northwest Quadrant and 8B, dash 1a which is a uh, community use designated for community use we're retaining those so they won't, won't be transferred and um uh i think that's as much as i have on that um question this has to do with um the covenants conditions and restrictions um and it has to do with the funding of traffic signaling um i don't have a great insight as to what was said obviously in, in um, the master association minutes or the, um, or the uh, feedback around that. Um, that those are recorded documents. Um, I just would iterate this, reiterate this, that the city in, as in one of its roles is, is gonna be assigning the declarant rights unmodified. The things that the, the, the developers rights and status that it obtained from Santa Fe Estates, it'll be turning over without modification. I don't see us as being active in resolving these, except in the other roles we will play, which is primarily around our role as, a, as the municipal authority, the municipal corporation. So this will be between uh, these, these, some of these questions will have to be resolved between uh, the master association in this case and the developer. Um, so signalization, the funding for signalization is an open question that we'll be passing on to the developer. And I'll be posting these so you'll have some understanding of what maybe what what you'll be what the selected developer will be assigned. Um, uh, let's see, as I roll down, um, so I'm not gonna be terribly, terribly um, cogent in these questions because of that. Uh, because of what we will be caring to uh, convey. Hey, Sean. Question. Yes, please, please. Uh, Jennifer Jenkins has had her hand up for a little while. I didn't know if you wanted to. Oh, sorry. That's Terrific. Nice. Go ahead, Jennifer. Oh, Thanks. thank you. Thanks, Noah. Um, just a quick question. Do you have current um, surveys of the property? Or yeah. Just... Yeah, they're recorded at the, um, they're recorded at the uh, county clerk. Okay, thank you. Thanks. I don't want, we don't have topos. Um, let's see, uh, about the sale, I think I covered this, but, uh, we'll, we'll be selling to a single entity, all the, all the tracks that we are selling. That is the tracks North of the 599 East of the, of the 285, um, those seven tracks, um, to one single entity. Okay. Uh, to be dedicated, uh, designations in the master plan. Again, um, as the declarant, we will be assigning these to be dedicated designations to the developer. So we'll be signing those. We won't be resolving these in this thing. Um, and, I, and I explained the context of our, as of basically my read on the city's ability to both take on uh, dedication and also to manage them well. It's, it's um, not something that our parks department or others are, are very uh, eager to undertake. And that's just, that's just the context in which it's occurring, not, not a, not a uh, uh, intention or aspiration. Um, I'm scrolling down to um, track designations. This is a this is a key thing. I've covered it before, but I really want to cover it again. This in utilities is the master plan tracks as such don't are not collinear with the 
with the new tracked boundaries. It does not alleviate the obligations under the master plan. Um, the, the most uh, sensitive, which has to do with housing, I believe are not gonna be problematic, but down by the Thor Thornburg mortgage, the um, former tract uh, 9A2, tract 11, and a portion of 7A slash B do split the new tract boundaries. It does not relieve the obligations under the master plan. Um, question one about, more, play yeah, please. Uh, one more question. I see Jennifer has her hand up. I don't know if she has another Go ahead, question. Jennifer. Sorry, um, one last thing. So with respect to the, um, the language in the master plan requiring dedication of the open spaces, parklands, trail easement, if, if, the, if those things are not to be dedicated to the city, does that push us into a master plan amendment? Because the master plan not only governs the property owner, but the, it governs the city as well. So how do we, um, maybe that's a question for Noah or Eli, but um, how do we reconcile that? Because the developer is gonna be required to comply with the master plan. So the city should be required to comply with the master plan as well. So that's a great question. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, uh, you know, the, the master plan was an agreement and approved upon agreement between the city and the developer at the time. And so all the obligations were, that were made at that time um, are still in place today. Um, if there were minor modifications um, that could be looked at as a maybe perhaps an administrative development plan amendment. Um, but anything farther than that would again have to go back to the decision making bodies for approval for amendments. Yeah, thanks. And, and I'm going to add, just add this, Jennifer, that I, I don't want to, uh, what I, I wanted to convey is that we haven't made any um, statements about intention, but I would assume the city would like to be the, the, the option would be the cities. So the, uh, the obligation is on the developer in the master plan. Uh, the obligation is not on the city to be a receiver, but I would anticipate the city would like to have that op that option, but, but it isn't, it isn't, hasn't stated its, its desire or intention. Okay, thank you. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, a question about playground equipment that's located near down below Thornburg in this uh, track 7AB. Um, I don't have any insight into this. It looks like uh, the, the questioner has asked about um, playground equipment that has been purchased, presumably under, uh, according to this by the homeowners association, what's its disposition? I have no insight, but I'll be that this will be another um, issue to the developer in its in the developer's role, assigned role um, as declarant, um, declarant right and status within the homeowner association context. And I did post up the homeowner association rules, both the uh, master association and the residential association, and also the village center. Um, so those are, I believe, posted up. Those are not if they're not recorded, we will be posting those up. That would be the goal. So I don't have insight into that answer. Um, and that's all I have. Um, I super appreciate you all being here. And let's let's just see, give another opportunity for questions. Well, that couldn't have been more satisfying from my point of view. So thank you all very, very much. And thank you to staff and thank you to developers and thank you also to the public for participating. I'm super, super uh, grateful. Sean, I'd like to just add a little closing. Um, Liz uh, had put in the uh, Q and A. Um, you can find the uh, list of questions that Sean has recited at our website, sfpublicassets.org. Uh, and if you have any further questions, uh, as I mentioned, Sean's email address, please direct them all to Sean and uh, he will uh, route them to the, the, the to correct person staff that uh, could help them with an answer. So uh, I think we've answered a lot of questions today and we appreciate you guys being here and we're looking forward to your uh, proposal responses. And so I think with that, I'd say thank you very much and um, we'll speak soon. Thanks, Rich. And thanks, everyone.